In the dead of winter, there's a certain comfort that comes from staying home. Yet, too often, people in this remote First Nations community must leave their families behind to make a long, often treacherous drive south for medical care. At the local clinic, Rose Michelle is in charge of organizing those trips. Bernice? Bernice? On this day, as is often the case, the only ambulance in the region is a couple hours out. You're just going to go meet the ambulance halfway. So Michelle gets a secretary to transport a critically ill man. 3,000 people live on this reserve. Last year, there were 750 emergency medical evacuations. That's at least two a day. And on top of that, another 5,000 trips out for other medical reasons. This is supposed to be our radiology, radiography room. However, we did not have the proper equipment. They had the vision, but not the money for equipment and trained staff. So it becomes a grueling journey for every x-ray, ultrasound, or appointment with a specialist. Four to six hours south for a medical trip. And then sometimes we're seen for, what, half an hour? And then we trek back home for another six hours. Terrifying for this young mother, but Karen Charles didn't think she had a choice. When she arrived at the clinic yesterday, her son could barely breathe. He was vomiting and he had severe diarrhea. But then help arrived in a way she had never imagined. Good morning, you guys. Hi. Hi. This is Rosie the robot, and she's back again today to follow up. Good morning, Mom. Hello. Long time no see. The robot operator is 500 kilometers away at the University of Saskatchewan. Meet pediatric specialist Dr. Tanya Holt. I'm going to come up a little closer, and if Mom, you wouldn't mind uh, taking off his shirt. In the past, Dr. Holt would have received a phone call from Pelican Arrows. Often, without seeing a patient, ultimately we determine we're going to have to bring them. That involves an incredible amount of resources. One trip by air ambulance can cost up to $10,000, but this time it wasn't necessary. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a listen to him now and see if he's improved. With the robot, Dr. Holt can see, touch and test Jesse. With help from a nurse, she listens to his lungs and heart. So we're still hearing some wheezing. The potential is immense. No one believes that more than the man sitting next to her. Dr. Ivar Mendez is a world-renowned neurosurgeon and scientist. He's pioneering the use of remote presence technology in Canada. What this technology will do will allow us for the first time to reach the patient where the patient is, regardless of where they are, and to bring the specialists, to bring the expertise that that individual needs in a period of time, in real time. His passion began more than a decade ago. And uh, we're just going to get going now, OK? OK, go ahead, Simon. In 2002, Mendez made history. From Halifax, he used a robotic arm and camera to assist with a brain surgery hundreds of kilometers away. Five years later, he introduced the first robots into patient care in Nova Scotia. And this is your patient, Valerie, Dr. Mendez. Hi, Valerie. Hello, doctor. Then, as part of a pilot project, he put a robot in an Inuit village on the northern coast of Labrador. It reduced the need for medical evacuations by 60 percent. It is clear that we cannot put specialists in hospitals in all the communities, you know, in Canada. But what we can do is we can uh, be more effective and more efficient in using the resources that we have in the cities, for example, to be able to take care of patients wherever they are makes sense. Yet five years later, this is yet another pilot project. Dr. Holt isn't even getting paid. Because I care about kids and as um, uh, I'm very, I'm volunteering for, because I think it's, uh, uh, could make amazing change. 
This technology breaks down barriers of time and distance. For a patient, it's just as easy to see a specialist on the other side of the country as one in the nearest city. And that challenges our entire healthcare system, from regulations to how doctors get paid. The barriers of this technology are not technological. There's going to be barriers that have to do with uh, who gets paid uh, and how much you get paid by seeing a patient at a distance. Yet Mendez is unwavering in his vision. In Saskatchewan, he has 11 robotic devices, and he believes the research will be enough to eventually convince policymakers they need to adapt the healthcare system. This is going to revolutionize the way we deliver health care, not only in Canada, but in the rest of the world. It's already making a difference on this remote reserve. A young mother worried for her son and scared to leave her community. Okay, thank you for coming in, Mom. That's fantastic. Now able to get her child the care he needed faster than ever before and close to home with the help of a robot. Bonnie Allen, CBC News, Saskatoon.